Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm going to be doing a review of Worlds Part 1. And I've been playing this on my PC. I've been playing this on my PlayStation 5. And I must say, the experience that I'm having has been pretty phenomenal. I am really enjoying Worlds Part 1. I've got some footage that I want to outlay to you now as to why I'm liking Worlds Part 1 so much. Let's get into the footage, shall we, people? So something introduced into Worlds is these new volumetrics. And they can take form of even fireflies at night. I mean, look at this planet, with these fireflies just taking off as the sun sets. Pretty darn impressive. I think it looks freaking beautiful, to be honest. And the actual rain hitting me right now, you can see that sort of like taking effect on not only me, but even on the terrain. I mean, look at that rock glistening in the sort of rain. It just feels far more alive at all times. I mean, yeah, we've got a T-posing exomech right now. I don't know what he's up to. He looks slightly broken. Oops! And, um, he's in the drink. <laughs> yeah, let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> I even find myself landing on dead moons and dead planets like this one. Mainly because you don't know what you're going to find when it comes to the volumetrics. I mean, look at this one. It's got like floating debris everywhere. It's pretty darn freaking awesome. Even though there's no creatures here or anything to really scan or anything of interest. I find it interesting mainly because I don't know what sort of volumetrics I'm going to find. What sort of wind or noise I'm going to find. I mean look at that beautiful nebula in the sky right there. And the stars. It's still beautiful. Right, well, I've got a quota to meet. I've got to take out some Sentinels. I am half tempted to blast that one. You know, I've already hit my 50, though. But yeah, enjoying this so much. I mean, flying down to planets now, you never really know what to expect. I mean, look at this. This looks like it's been modded on a PC. I mean, look at the size of this flora. Look at the actual skybox, the clouds, everything. It has breathed new life into this game. I'm not going to lie, I am excited to explore. And I do want to do my random portal dice explorations all the more so and bring those back to my channel to see the wonders that No Man's Sky has now to offer. I do wonder though how long it will be before I start to see the same patterns emerging inside of the verse as I travel and wander amongst these stars. And I do like that the vast majority of planets remain pretty much unchanged to prior to this update. Because it makes those that you do find that are a little rarer, that little bit extra special. And when you do find them, you're kind of elated. Like, on my days, I haven't seen a planet like this before. Obviously, the planet that I'm flying over right now is not one of those planets. This planet, I have seen this sort of makeup, this sort of variety, a billion gazillion times, but there are some beautiful frost worlds out there to be found and to be had. So earlier you saw me flying over a planet where I said it looked like it'd been modded by PC. Here we go, we found another variant of that, but this one's got these giant bulbous sort of budding plants sitting on it. But not only that, it's got plumes of gaseous smoke that rise from its surface, just every now and again for no real apparent reason which just adds to the fact that it's different from the previous planet I was on. But it does make me wonder, as I say, am I going to see these patterns are happening over and over again? But I do love the idea of these volumetrics that can add to the actual feel of a planet massively and change how it actually feels to the player. So I am enjoying the new life that is breathed into these worlds currently. But at the moment, I've got no desire to land on this planet. I know that if I did, I haven't got much to do. Yes, I've got a lot more to see. I've got a lot more to catalogue. To, but to what end? Now, Sean mentioned one of his favourite things to do now is just to fly into planets and fly through the cloud layers. I can see why he said that. These clouds and the volumetric effects of the clouds. I mean, look at this just look fantastic. Freaking awesome. It makes me wonder whether they're going to bring in maybe gas giants. 
Because, of course, when you fly into a gas giant, things start off to be volumetric in, in sort of essence, like these clouds. I mean, look at that. You can even see the freighters through it. It's beautiful. And then as you fly into a gas giant, the gas turns into a liquid, and that can even be a liquid metal. There could be all sorts that they could employ when it comes to gas giants. But you can see here, this planet, this planet is one of the new planets with the floating islands. Now, a lot of these floating islands are just there as eye candy right now. A lot of them don't even have blocking volumes. You can fly straight through them. You can't land on all of these. The only ones you can land on are the ones that have the waterfalls upon them right now. They're the only ones that have blocking volumes like this one. I should be able to land on this one. I should be able to place a base on this one. However, all the others that you see here, all the ones that are smaller variants thereon of, they're just there as eye candy. They're there for show. They have no blocking volume. And they serve really no other purpose than for a great photo opportunity. And I'd say that's what this brings in buckets, is photo opportunities. I mean, look how beautiful this actually looks, people. But go below, below the surface, there isn't much to do. I mean, yes, there are some new creatures that have been added and boss fights that have been added. And I know that's going to make a lot of people super happy, myself included. Because some of these things are amazing. But you can see here, even the blocking volume to this is, is out of sync slightly. Because I myself look like I'm David Copperfield or something. I'm floating above the surface right now. And that's the same if you go to walk on these waterfalls. They look amazing. But when you try to interact with them, the blocking volumes on them are very haphazard. I'll show you what I mean. You would expect to be moved with the current of the uh, river, right? No, you just stand in place and you stand above it. It's almost like there's some sort of glass sheet protecting you from going into the river. And it's the same across the surface of the planet and the actual floating island of itself. You always slightly skimming the surface or your feet are slightly going into the surface i say slightly look at that it's up to my knees right now so i would say these have been put in and maybe put in rather quickly i'm hoping that it gets approved upon what i do love now though is every single piece of flora on planets seems to have life i mean if you look at these trees there's a little bit of sway you can see the leaves just gently moving in the breeze but as the wind picks up trees now bow and bend everything feels more organic more alive so on one hand you've got blo dodgy wonky blocking volumes that take away from the magic of, of the immersion and then you've got this sort of stuff that adds to the immersion and it's almost like well for what they've put in they've also took away i mean look at my knees right now and it kind of makes you think well if you're gonna do it do it properly um, but yeah, it's nice to see that they're doing it, even if they have just sort of almost shoehorned or penciled it in for now as something that they intend to improve upon. At least that's what I'm hoping happens. But yeah, I do find myself just gazing out at large vistas like this now, a lot more looking for that decent photo. I'm just watching the clouds roll in. Those relaxing moments, if you play No Man's Sky for the relaxing moments, and now far, far more fleshed out. Okay, now I'm touching down on this planet. And this is a planet where there's Diplos for a start off, which are beautiful, majestic even. You've got the volumetrics, you've got some beautiful plant life. And not only that, we're about to encounter a firestorm. It's about to kick off massively on this planet. As you can see now, my hazard protection is taking a little bit of a beating. But yeah, I'm ready for this. Let's see exactly what kicks off when it comes to the volumetrics here. I mean, you can see all these sort of sparks sparking into life. It's pretty darn beautiful. Even though it's pretty darn dangerous, you can't but just stand and just admire the magnificence of this storm on this planet. Watch out, little butterfly creature. You're going to get incinerated. I guess. Beautiful. Some of these vast new welds definitely add welds to the agenda. I mean, look at how beautiful this planet is. And as I've been flying over it, I've even seen fauna wandering about on the planet. So the level of detail draw on some planets is pretty phenomenal. 
So anyway, I'm going to touch down on this planet because I need to find myself some pyrite so I can refuel my ship and continue on with my review. Now, something to point out, people, is all the planets that I'm showcasing right now are all the planets from the latest expedition. Because Shaun of the Murrays inside the actual patch notes says that this journey is to show off some of the new biomes that have been added in. So I figured this would be a good showcase. Sometimes as you rise above a crest in welds and you see the suns peering through the actual clouds and you see the sun rays hit the planet. And you've got the glass of the cockpit of your ship. It just adds to the gravitas of this is an alien world. This isn't alien planes that you've come across. And when you see things like this, with these sort of like, these kiting cages, which is a strange thing. They've been about for ages, but the kiting have only just been really added into the actual game. When I say the kiting as well, let me show you what I mean. So I'll just call in a, a brood mother to show you one of the new creatures that's been added inside of Wells part one. So let's jump on out. So something that we was lacking before is like a boss fight. And we've definitely got that now in the way of the Crichton. And the way they bring them out is to smash one of their little grubby type creatures, one of their younglings, into pulp, which I don't seem to have one on me. So that's okay. I'll go find one. So here's the new icon now, Juicy Grub, and it's just over here on Yonder Hill. They're quite cute looking little things, they're like these little pupa, catalilla type grub things. So here we go, let's head on over, let's pick this guy up. I mean, that one's definitely not cute, I mean, look at, <laughs> look at the gnashes on that. Okay, right, now let's go and smush that into grubby paste, chicka boom. And we should have ourselves a lovely battle now with this guy. Pow, pow. There we go. We'll use a pulp spitter. Set it on fire. Why not? Brilliant. And you can probably hear the haptics on my joypad there. So you can see here we've got boss bar, energy bars on this thing as well. You've got to shoot off all the armor plating. Once you've actually shot on off all the armor plating, it makes it a lot softer. It's going to take more damage when you hit it in the exposed areas of its body. Taking off his armour as well also sort of ups the chances of you getting a drop of a new chitin head, a modifier to make yourself look different. However, I, I don't know whether they're actually inside of the actual expedition or whether it's outside of the expedition that the drop rate is actually enhanced. Because yeah, I'm not seeing much drop. But there we go. That's one of the new chitin boss fights that you can do. Also, the Sentinel Walkers have been given bars in a similar sort of fashion. So yeah. There's a lot more to do when it comes to taking out enemies, but to what ends? After you have got all those appearance modifiers and you've made yourself look different and you've got all the drops, are you still going to go and hunt these things? So something I have to point out is right now it's night time on this planet and we've got a storm that's just kicking off. You can see all the volumetrics, you can see all the wind happening, you can see all the movement, but not only that, you can see the planet come to life with all this glowing type effects. It just adds so much more organicness, life, immersion into the actual game. And I, I must say, it, it's put a whole new, fresh slant on everything. A nice lick of paint. It, it really is cool. However, what I would say is, once I've actually rendered this video, and I've got it up onto YouTube, a lot of what I'm seeing is crystal clear as I'm playing. But with all the volumetrics all taking place and the dust particles, I'm seeing a lot more pixelization once it's rendered. Even though I'm rendering it into 4K, I'm getting a lot more sort of noise. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still flying down to planets and going, yep, seen this one before, and then just flying off to the next one, just like this planet. So here we have one of the newer frost biomes. Oh look, there's a load of navigational data there. I might go and grab that while I see it, I guess. Let's just touch on down. It's always good for trading in for maps, this stuff. I guess sometimes when you pick this up though, it does upset the sentinels. But um, we won't worry about that too much. Let's just grab these. Lovely jubbly. So there is still quite a lot to be found on planet surfaces. And the sense of exploration has definitely been upped somewhat. And coming across planets like this that I've never seen before, which could only really get delivered in before when it came to maybe, say, PC modding, 
is a welcome addition to No Man's Sky, especially for any new player coming into the game and seeing all these lovely new biomes. It is it is a sight to be had. It, the only thing is, is I would say that's what it is. It's a sight to be had. There's not much more to actually do on the planets once you're here. Take that, you evil, obnoxious flora. I guess. We could do with more hazardous floras, to be honest. I mean, there's like, what, three varieties of hazardous flora right now? It'd be nice to see a heck of a lot more added in. But as you can see, this frost crystal planet looks pretty darn interesting, especially with all these volumetric effects. Pretty darn lovely, wouldn't you agree? Well, something else that Worlds has brought in is new water physics. And you can see here how it nicely ripples and hits this shoreline. But on planets where there's higher, more aggressive storms, these waves can pick up and they can pick up fairly high. I mean, this world's beautiful with the snowflakes all falling down again with the volumetrics. And in the volumetrics, the clouds and also the water shaders, the way that everything feels more alive and more organic, it gives you that sort of sense of the old E3 trailers that what you find out here is rather limitless and more organic and more believable and has that level of immersion that it just didn't quite have before. It almost looks like this water's starting to freeze at this shoreline right now. I don't know whether that's a thing, but um, yeah, it does look pretty darn cool. It does, does look that way, I have to say. And the actual swimming effects looks a lot better now than they did before. They really do. Hello Games has done wonders when it comes to the reflections, to the physics, and to the dynamics of what you find on planets. It's just, what do you do once you're here? Yes, we've been given these new bosses, these new chitin bugs to actually fight against, but it'd be nice to see that upped a little. It'd be nice to see more aggressive fauna added to planets. It'd be nice to see more aggressive creatures in the sea and in the sky and upon land on some planets. So, as you can see, there's quite a lot going for Worlds Part 1. There's a heck of a lot of different effects that when they all come together, it just works. And it just makes the game feel so more alive. I can't... I really wish I didn't sell my VR setup. I would love to see this in VR. And I am looking to get a new VR setup, perhaps for my PC rather than PlayStation, because it's a more multimedia experience. But anyway, Worlds Part 1, I feel, has given us so much more to see and brought in so much more immersion. There's a couple of things that break that immersion, but I'm hoping they get approved and upon. But there's not a lot inside of game for us to do. I'm still landing on planets and going, oh, I haven't seen that before, I haven't seen that before. I am spending a little bit more time on the planet. But then there's not much else to do. Yes, they've added in the new bosses for us to fight, but I'm wondering how much lifespan that's got in it. Because after you've got the new heads that it gives you, what other drops do you get from that that's worth having? They need to actually think about things a little bit more, how they can add depth to this sort of stuff. You know, there are ideas that they could implement. It's like, we're, at the moment, we've got living ships. And the living ships don't have too many different modules when it comes to the actual tech that you put in there. When I say the tech, I'm on about the weaponry. So, you know, there's no equivalent of the Silotron or the Positron ejectors or other weaponry. I don't even believe that it's got the equivalent of rockets. At the moment, it can just do photon cannons and phase beams. It'd be nice if perhaps taking out these bugs sometimes gave you organs for your living ship that give you alien sort of weaponry. And maybe there could be some real rare ones amongst those. Maybe some bullets that actually stick to your opponent's shields and slowly eat them away like organic boogers or something. You know, maybe you could get some sort of rectal organ that fires out a load of cack behind you, like ink, so they can't see where they're going and lets you escape. There's so many different organic weapons that they could implement into the living ship to make it a not only an awesome fighting ship, but something a little bit quirky, a little bit different, a little bit fun. And perhaps some of these actual upgrades could be super rare to come across on the drops from these creatures, meaning that you do want to go up against them to try and overpower your living ship. And not only that, we could also get technologies for perhaps to feed to our living frigates to up their stats or give them special perks 
of the bring back rate for um, the sacks to expand your infantry to your living ship goes up because at the moment those things are as rare as rocking horse turd in fact some people think it's bugged and you can't actually get those anymore I've already up managed to fully upgrade mine I don't know whether it's a thing or not but there could be ways and means to kill these bugs and to get those sort of expansion slots for your living ship to increase its actual organ chambers there's a heck of a lot they could do when it comes to things that they implement and add depth to add bring back ability and replayability but at the moment it just feels that like, again there's a lot of this that's gone in that rather than think of the depth they've gone for the initial wow factor oh my god this looks amazing this looks amazing but it's a game it's a video game there needs to be a fun bring back ability element and at the moment it's got the wow factor but it hasn't got the i want to play it factor not a hundred percent there in my opinion and i'm hoping worlds part two might up that might bring some of the depth that the gameplay mechanics need maybe these new purple systems would have purpose to go there we can only but hope fingers crossed but yeah, I am totally enjoying my time with uh, Worlds Part 1. And if I had to rate it, I'm still going to rate it pretty darn high. Because my favourite updates so far have been Next. Because Next reshaped the way that we play the game. Origins. Because Origins brought in a heck of a lot of new biomes, new creatures, and all that sort of wonder. Worlds Part 1 is kind of a mixture of the two. But I'd say it leans more heavily towards Origins. I mean, look at this sunset behind me right now with these clouds rolling in. It looks freaking phenomenal. It looks beautiful. Yeah, we've got Exo going mental about all the different weathers that are happening right now. And you know what? I, I actually find myself just looking at vistas, taking photos a lot more, looking around a lot more, and just taking in the sights and the how beautiful this game actually is. And I'm hoping that one day I can say, well, not it doesn't only just look amazing. It actually plays amazing. It, you want to come back, you want to do more, says the person that's got 1,400 hours on a single save. But I think you get what I'm saying. There's so much to see now. There's very little to do on the planets. Once you get to the level that I'm at, once you've S-classed everything, what else is there to do? You know, we need some sort of gameplay loop, maybe some sort of raid system end game content a better loop to the galaxies and their repetition and i'm hoping all that comes and i hope it all comes before light no fire launches i'd like to say that hello games has put a bow on no man's sky and there's so much of the lore so many loose ends so much that needs that bow needs that polish needs that depth and i think they're going the right way about it every single update you're seeing that steam review go up you're seeing the player base's opinions go up we saw a 400 percent return on players and new players alike come into the community and that was just on one platform alone i really do hope that hello games manages to get people's interest back on no man's sky to show what their studio is capable of and what a delight like no fire is going to be when it finally launches so if I had to score No Man's Sky Wells Part 1, I'm going to be scoring this. It feels weird to be scoring a Part 1 when you know that there's a Part 2 and it's not complete yet. You know, Part 1, Part 2. Really, uh, it's hard to give it full marks. So for that, I'm, I'm going to score this. It probably feels a little unfair. I probably an 8.2 out of 10. It's brilliant, it's given us so much more to see, and it's given us a little bit of life and organicness to the planets. But it still hasn't made me want to stay on the planets for very long. And that's the problem. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.